In today's second reading, St. Paul urged his readers to walk in the light of God and to avoid the path of darkness. The path that has promiscuity, greed, violence, bickering, jealousy, envy, all of those things that sap a human being of a God-given dignity. But to walk in the light, to know where we're going, to know how to live as real men, real women, in the service of God and concern for one another. But in today's gospel reading, we see that as important as religion is, the key to revelation, religion can also be so bright as to blind us. When we think we know more than we do. I know when I was newly ordained, I had completed four years of philosophy and neo-scholastic philosophy. I was and remain a follower of Thomas Aquinas. I thought I knew about, a lot about that. Then I received my master's in religious studies, so I thought, well, I'm pretty well versed in our religion. On my ordination day, I thought I knew quite a bit. Then I go off to Fordham University for my doctoral studies, and I suddenly realize, not so much. <laughs> And every year of my priesthood, decade after decade, I realize how little I actually know. It's good for Catholics to begin with the catechism. We have a wonderful catechism of the Catholic faith. It's about this thick. And you don't have to read it from beginning to end, but if you have a question, look it up in the index and you'll find answers. And it's a very rich document. But that's just like the hors d'oeuvres for a great meal. You know, like the cheese crackers beforehand. You know, before the prime rib comes out. Every time a papal encyclical comes out, I'll read it and I'll say, boy, I never thought of it that way before. And then I'll reread it five, six, seven times. And each time I read it, I start looking at the footnotes and I think how much more I have to learn just about this one topic and how little I actually know. Now, the Pharisees that were opposing Jesus in today's gospel passage, their knowledge was blinding them. And plus their prejudice against Galileans in general. In the Gospel of John, the Jews are often referred to, but really they should be called the Judeans, because all of Jesus' disciples from, were, for, were Jews, but from Galilee. And we know that the uh, accent that they had would give them away. We see that in the denial of Peter in the Passion account. You're a Galilean, you talk funny. <laughs> so they could spot a Galilean a mile away. You're a country bumpkin. We live in the big city. So there was that. But there was also this knowledge that the Pharisees had was, well, the Messiah was to come from Bethlehem. This man's from Nazareth. And the general attitude would be, what good could come out of Nazareth? We see that even amongst his apostles, astonished that that would happen. They also knew that keeping the Sabbath was sacred, was so important, that people died rather than break the Sabbath. This was the sign that they were following Yahweh and they were resting on the Sabbath just as God did. And you'll notice that this was a chronic blindness that Jesus cured on the Sabbath. Not something that was an emergency. All the Pharisees would say, if you fell down and broke your arm, you could have immediate uh, medical attention. If you were bleeding, the wounds could be treated on the Sabbath. But these chronic illnesses, which were the controversial cures that Jesus performed, man with this withered hand, a woman with a long time hemorrhage, all of these cures were chronic illnesses. You could come back any day of the week and be cured. But this man not only received the cure, but he had to walk a long distance. You're only supposed to walk so far on the Sabbath. You were supposed to rest. Jesus actually made some sort of ointment on the Sabbath. They would see that as some sort of medicine. That was a breaking of the Sabbath. 
And people before, holy people, good people, had died rather than break the Sabbath. And here Jesus is breaking the Sabbath. But you see, the Pharisees themselves were astonished at the experience they had. Some were saying, he has to be from God, and others were saying, no, this is impossible, and the resistance becomes more and more bitter. They were blinded by their knowledge not to be able to see Christ's true identity. And they thought they knew more than they did. And that's what got them in trouble. And religious people from all religions get in trouble when they think they know more than they actually do. And we begin to judge others in a way that only God can judge them because only God can see into the human heart, mind, and imagination. Now we want to take our faith in its richness, in its light, its fullness, and walk humbly before God, saying each day, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, that I may show your mercy to a world that's so desperately in need of it, and cast a little more light in the midst of darkness.